Man, you guys have been waiting a while for this one, haven't you? Hey guys, DMS, today I have for you the amp that I have replaced my NFP-11 with. The amp and DAC, sorry, it is the JDS Labs EL Amp and EL DAC. Now, I want to note very first, off the top of everything, the EL Amp and the EL DAC is not the same as the Element Combo Unit. So don't, don't ask me about that one, because this review is not about the Element Combo Unit. I'm only talking about the EL Amp and the EL DAC. You know what, I'll unplug them, that way I can get them here on camera. I'm gonna do B-roll of these, but it's just gonna be a little bit easier if I can point to things. Oh, those cables just fell behind there. That's gonna be a pain to get back up. Let's talk about the DAC real quick, because I don't really like talking about DACs, so we'll get this one over with. I'm not even using this microphone. <sighs> the build on both of these is very similar. Um, we have this, what feels like a almost rubberized plastic on the bottom with little feet and the rest is made out of metal. On the front, we have a touch sensitive button. You just swipe your finger over it or touch it to activate it. Um, and I would show you, but I just unplugged everything and the power cords just fell behind my desk. But you know what? I'll do it anyway. Here you go. That would be for one input. That's for another. That's for another. And you hold it to turn it back off. As far as those inputs go, let me put this power cable back down there. We've got them right here. Optical coax and USB and then everything just goes RCA out from there now I don't really like talking about DAX and you know oh DAX and their detail and this and that and that because honestly when it comes down to it I've heard some DAX that make a difference but I don't think DAX make the biggest difference in the world I think that pairing a DAC with an amp and how they pair together is more important so DAX specs I'm not gonna get into that but overall, I do find this to be a pretty decent DAC for the price. I certainly find it to be an upgrade from the uh, Modi, or Modi, or however you want to pronounce it. And obviously, it's a pretty sweet match. So let's talk about the other half, the EL Amp. First off, big knob. You hear that? Mine does make a little bit of a sound when I rotate it, only at certain angles, uh, because these are made out of machined, I believe, aluminum. Uh, either way, it's just, it's machined metal. So you may hear, don't hear it now, at certain angles you hear the metal of this knob rubbing, just a little bit. Uh, overall, this is an insanely well-built amp though. It's definitely heavier than the DAC. And here, let's go over everything. So, quarter inch output, that's where your headphones are gonna go. Inputs on the back, we have power and RCA in. And we also have an RCA out. Now many people would think that means that this has a preamp built in, it does not. The only way to access that is by turning off the amp, and then this RCA out just becomes a pass-through. So you will not be using this as a preamp for your sound system unless you are plugging it into the quarter-inch jack on the front. Now next to this toggling power button, there is also a high-low gain switch, which can be pretty useful. Um, I find that the gain on this is pretty significantly different between the two, which is nice. I'd use high gain for something like T50s and low gain for something like these, the MDR-1A or anything else that just doesn't need a ton of power. And 650s you could technically use on either, though I preferred them on high gain. Now this produces a very similar amount of power to the NFP-11. So if you're considering upgrading, don't expect to just suddenly be able to power all kinds of things you couldn't power before. The difference is that I mainly notice is this just sounds a lot cleaner. And the NFB11 is still a very clean amp, but what it does is very similar to, I don't know if you guys saw my old Dynalo review, but Dynalo does something that just makes everything sound sweeter. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but just makes everything sound a little bit magical. And these do that, not quite to the extent that Dynalo does. Maybe 40% of what Dynalo did is in this amp, which I find very impressive. Now, obviously Dynalo is still a powerhouse and these don't produce power like Dynalo does but getting some of that sound is really cool. I find that a lot of headphones that are very amp dependent like these a lot. I didn't have compression issues like I had with the Magni and things that would sound very different from the black label to the Magni to the little dot to the NFB11. I found just universally across the board sounded very clean on the EL amp. Many headphones that would, or even IEMs that would reveal things like glare in an amp or you know, too much of a warm sound or anything like that, I wouldn't hear anything on these. I would just hear the headphones. Didn't feel like anything else was being added. And that is honestly one of the reasons why I really, really, really like this is because I feel like it's not altering or changing the sound. I actually feel like I have a genuinely clean, neutral amp. And I've been using it with 
Otor with Bayer Dynamics, uh, even the 600 ohm Bayers that can be relatively hard to drive at times. They're not the hardest to drive 600 ohm headphones, but they do take a little bit to push. I used it with the 600 ohm AKG Sextets. I've used it with THXOOs. I've used it with Icon. I've used it with LCDs, 650s, just across the board, all kinds of things. Even with the advanced GTRs. The only thing that I had a little bit of trouble with was the Campfire Andromeda, and that's because they're so sensitive that even on low gain, I could just barely turn up the volume. Now, oh, I just sneezed a ton. It's also worth noting that Andromeda is one of those IEMs that you can power off a phone on very low volume. You probably shouldn't be hooking these up to an amp anyway, unless it's just a very, 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 very high sensitivity amp. They do both also take the same power brick, which is nice. It's interchangeable between the two. And it comes with a pretty cool looking quarter inch adapter. Now there are some downsides. I've noticed three. One of which being that sometimes when I turn my computer on uh, and I turn the stack on, I occasionally have to go down to my audio panel and unmute it because for some reason Windows automatically mutes it when I plug it in. That might be a Windows thing, it might be a DAC thing because I've had that happen sometimes with other DACs. Other than that, I've had no connectivity issues at all with the stack. The other downside would be that I wish this was a preamp output instead of just a line level out, but I do understand the benefit of it. If you have an amp like this, it's always possible that you might have other amps as well that you just want to run a line level signal to. But at that case, I'd rather just split them at my DAC. Um, so I wish that this output was a preamp output, but it's not. So I've been using the Magni 3 as a preamp for my speakers and just running that straight out of this. And the last downside is that they get warm. They both get very warm. Warm enough that the little stick-on feet can slide off because the glue melts. Um, now, I haven't noticed any actual structural problems with these, but they do get warm under use. That's just part of a lot of amps and DACs. So if you have some of these and they're getting warm, don't worry about it. But maybe check to make sure you didn't lose one of your little stick-on adhesive rubber feet. This one's actually staying on pretty good. Oh, not anymore. Um, no, these are just little ones you can buy in packs that just stick right on, just like that. Um, and it's this glue. I've had problems with this before. I put little rubber feet on my Asgard 2 once, which I don't even have an Asgard 2 anymore, but at the time I did. Uh, and the Asgard just melted the glue right off those. It happens. Amps get warm. But the big question is, do I consider this an upgrade from NFB11 since I did so myself? Absolutely. I think the NFB11 is a phenomenal amp. If you have one, it may or may not be worth upgrading for you because it's just that one extra step. And of course, there are upgrades that many people would consider incremental. If you need extra power, then it might not be the amp for you because this produces a similar amount of power to NFB11. But if you're just trying to get a little bit more out of your headphones or if you have headphones that are extremely transparent and you just don't want something adding glare or anything else to them, this is definitely a great go-to amp and honestly one of the best in its price range. So with all that said, I very highly recommend the JDS Labs EL Amp and EL DAC. And one other thing, a lot of people were complaining that I was recommending a product that was made in China, which was the NFP11. Which, yeah, I mean, I guess that does make it difficult for things like warranties, but you don't have to worry about with these. These are made in the United States of America, and their support was really easy to reach. I just emailed them and heard back from them less than a day later, so really nice guys. If you're around RMAF or something, you should go visit their booth. So guys, if you like this video, please leave a like down below and a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. And if you want early access to my videos, as always, you can check them out at the Patreon link in the video description. But until the next one, guys, peace. So...